Hi team, we are going to cover periodic LIFO in this video. So periodic LIFO last in, first out. So remember periodic is keeping track of inventory only periodically, not with every sale like Perpetual does. So periodic counts inventory only at the end of the period. So in this case at the end of the month. So it will tell you what ending inventory is. In this case, we have 11 units in our ending inventory. You'll see that we don't have any sales during the month. We really did have sales during the end of the month, but they're not reported in periodic. We just assume that all sales happened the last day of the month. Although, of course, they didn't in reality. It's just how we report them for accounting when we're using a periodic system. So let's go ahead and jump in. We're going to have three columns. So we're going to start with cost of goods available for sale. So cost of goods available is what we have available to sell to our customers during the month. Then we have cost of goods sold, what we actually sold during the month or period, and then ending inventory, what we're left with at the end. So I'm gonna start by bringing our dates down, and then I'm going to move our um, cost of goods available for sale down. So we had our beginning balance, which was three at three, and then our purchases. So what we had at the beginning plus everything we purchased is what we have available to sell to our customers, right? What we had in our warehouse already plus everything we bought is what we had available to sell. So what we have available to sell it is either going to be sold or we're still going to have on hand in our ending inventory. So it's going to split to one of these two categories. Okay, so knowing that, let's add our number of units. So this gives us cost of goods available for sale units of 25. They told us that ending inventory units were 11. That number comes from right up here. 11 units in ending inventory. So if we had 25 units available and in our warehouse, right, available total 25, and then at the end we still had 11, that means that we must have sold the rest, which would be 14. So cost of goods sold number of units is 14. So we would have sold 14 units. So we're going to decide which units did we sell? Which 14 units were sold during the period? So we're doing LIFO, so the last inventory in, the last stuff to come in is the first stuff to go out, right? So this is the last stuff in, and so that's gonna be the first stuff out. So the 14 units that we're selling, we're gonna sell from the bottom first. So all 12 at eight are gonna go first. That takes care of most of them, right? And then we need another two. So we're gonna sell two at six. That gets us to our 14. So we didn't sell any of those original units. So we're gonna have zero at three. So that gets us to our 14 units sold. So now we're gonna look at what do we still have in our ending inventory? What's left at the end? So here we're going to have all three of these first ones. We didn't sell any of those. So we're still gonna have three at three. For the second one, we had 10 units, but we sold two of those, so we're left with eight, eight at six. And then for this bottom layer, we had 12, we sold 12, so we would have zero at eight. So for our ending inventory, that's gonna leave us with 11 units, which is awesome because that's what we needed up here. And then we're gonna have a total cost of 57. So really this whole thing would be our answer. So we have the detail of what's um, in, in the units, so each layer, so 11 total units, and then 57 total dollars in our ending inventory, that would be reported on our balance sheet. And then we have our cost of goods sold. So our cost of goods sold was 14 units, and then our total cost of goods sold is 108. So this would be our answer for cost of goods sold. So that takes us through periodic LIFO.